Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. There's my logo. There we go. Everything's going wrong for me tonight. But uh, I had to start the show all over again just to do a nice clean version of it for the video. I'm Alex Bennett. This is uh, Alex Bennett's uh, Ramble, and it goes on until midnight. And uh, to start off the show, uh, I, I think we should go to an old friend. What do you say, huh, po folks? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, never a waste of time is calling out to the other coast of the United States and talking to our good friend, Larry Bobbles Brown. Hello, Larry. <laughs> or maybe my total waste of time. But, uh, uh, yeah, yeah to to no. Uh, and uh, tell, tell them about the, uh, the uh, you messaged me by Facebook, which I thought for you was rather uh, significant in that it is almost too technologically hot, di difficult for you. But yeah, you it's very toxic for me. Uh, I can't, uh, I'm having a problem with my Yahoo. I think it's got a virus. Yeah, and so it, Yahoo is where you get your mail? Yeah, and it says, I know I've got, I have, uh, I have messages in the inbox, and I, I deleted some last night, and then it threw me yeah. out of the inbox. Yeah. And there's still some messages in there, but I can't, yeah, I can't get back in. It just says there's no messages in your inbox, but there are. And on the side where it says, the number of messages you have, it has a minus sign, which I've never seen before. And I think I opened up a, uh, a weird letter there last week that I bet it's, it probably has a virus. Well, uh, uh, here's, here's what you do. Have you tried just uh, rebooting your computer and starting it up again? Yeah, I did that. You, you did that, and it still has the same problem. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. Well, you know... Um, uh, maybe I could solve it for you by you giving me your password and everything, and I can go on to the, the thing and, and see. But let's, I, I, I can't do that today because I have to go work out. Because you're, uh, you're ripped. Uh, no, I rip something, but I don't. <laughs> You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm working out every day. I know, day. You, you hate working out. <laughs> every day I, I go down, and so it's a block and a half away. And I, I actually, I think the main exercise I get is the walk for a block, so and, a half a block down and a half down and a block and a half back. And I was thinking just to be ornery about it and, and counterproductive, uh, it's a block and a half away. I was thinking every day of taking a cab down there. <laughs> um, That's Uber over there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I just, uh, you know, I just, uh, just uh, yeah. So anyway, so I, um, um, so I, 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 I go down to this place and I, I do the bike. That's basically what I do. Uh, you know, there are a few other machines there. There are those other torture devices, and I use a few of them now and then. I do a thing for my, for my torn meniscus, I, uh, some leg lifts, and another machine which is kind of you're doing push-ups and abs and things like that. But quite frankly. Uh, I find the whole process so fucking dull and boring. Oh, it's incredibly boring. And I'm, I sit there, the first five minutes especially is the hardest for me on the bike. And then I get, I say, I'm going to only go 20 minutes today. And then when I get to 20 minutes, 25 is, the, is a walk in the park, okay? So I usually do about 25. And as I'm sitting there pedaling, I'm going, you know, this is a bicycle that's going nowhere. I'm wasting my fucking time, and everybody tells me this is good for me. Uh, and I've seen no, absolutely no benefit, and I've been doing this for a month now, I see, and, and five days a week most of the time. And I've seen very, very little difference in me. Uh, so I, I, don't, I, I don't get it. Now, you run, right? I run. How far do you run? Uh, about six miles. About six miles. How long does that take you? An hour. Yeah. Okay. And and you do about what twice a week? Uh, every other day. Well, every, every four other, times a week. Every other day. Okay. So did you do it today already, or? I'm going to do it after this. Oh, I see. And, and, and you have your little running shorts and. Uh, yeah. Well, not the, just the sweats today because it's freezing. Yeah. 
Uh, I, I, I just don't run because at this age, there's too much that jiggles around. When I yeah, run. it does give you a pounding, so I don't know. It becomes addictive. If I don't run, I get really depressed. So. Oh, yeah. Well, you, you, you go for the endorphins, right? Runner's high, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't do drugs, but you're doing drugs. I'm doing drugs. Well, no, endorphins are very... Uh, do you know the reason why heroin addicts um, have such a hard time quitting heroin? No. Because what happens is heroin is like your endorphins. Your endorphin is a... Your endorphins that you build when you, when you exercise is the same as morphine. It's a morphine-based substance. And when you supply morphine to your body, your body goes, well, I don't have to produce it. He's, I'm getting it from somewhere else. And so your body shuts down the production of endorphins, right? So now mm -hmm. you're high on heroin all the time. One day you quit heroin and your body doesn't suddenly say, oh, well, now I better go back to work again. Your body takes at least a year before it starts really producing enough endorphins to keep you happy. You know, so that's why heroin is so hard to quit is because you have replaced the endorphins with the heroin. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Endorphins are very, I was reading, there was a study years ago, I can't find it, but they, you know, when people fall, what they, I'm, I'm not a big believer in love, but when people, when you get attracted to somebody, your body releases endorphins. And they say that endorphin well, wears usually, off in exactly usually, 91 days. Usually I release sperm. <laughs> that's, that's on the first day, second it, it, day. That's on the second day. Yeah, well, I mean, it, the thing is that I, my body doesn't know. I don't, I don't think I've ever used my endorphins. I've ever gotten them. You know, I'll tell you when endorphins do kick in is if you, um, let's say you fall down, you break your leg. Okay, and now you're in terrible, excruciating pain. All of a sudden, that thing that you just hurt, you ever, it, it, have you ever broken a leg or hurt an arm or really hurt yourself? Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, it doesn't hurt anymore? That's because your body rushes endorphins to that part of your body, and it dulls the pain. Uh, wow. Yeah. So that's, uh, so I, I'm going to go out today to get my endorphin rush and break my arm. So that, it's... <laughs> But no, so what you've got is you've got an endorphin uh, uh, addiction, and you're addicted to morphine, basically. And that's why when you don't run, you get really cranky and disoriented. And Yeah, exactly. You, yeah. Some people who are so, really exercising. It bores the hell out of me, but i got to do it. Yeah. So anyway, but it bores me. It just bores me. I just I have yeah. no idea why I'm on that fucking bike. I, I put on... Uh, I put on PBS documentaries and watch them while I'm pedaling away. And I go, well, I could be at home while doing the same thing, you know, lying there. So, man, girlfriend's so proud of me. She goes, oh, you're, I'm so proud you're working out. You know, and I'm going, what? I'm, 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 it's nothing important going on here, you know? It's boring. It's dull. Uh, there aren't even really good-looking women at the gym that I can ogle or, <laughs> you know. Well, that's that's great about New York. There, you're so, you're block and a half from anything. Yeah, you're a block and a half. But the problem is that after you leave the gym on the way home, it's it's really good. You know what's next to my gym? My pharmacy. I have this pharmacy that deals me out my pills at three three a month's worth at a time. It's the new thing. I'm, I'm saving money like crazy. I'm spending less a month now for for prescription drugs than I was spending, I'm spending le less a month than I was spending, excuse me, I'm, I'm spending less for three months than I was spending each month on drugs. And, and the pharmacy for that is right next door to my uh, workout place. But then right next door to that is Popeyes. Popeyes, they have that in New York. <laughs> yeah, right next to that is Popeyes. By the way, right, that's right next door to the Baskin Robbins. So really, you've got, well, between the gym and the home, I've got this gauntlet I have to run, you know, <laughs> that's trying to just do away. I mean, if I went into any one of those places, I'd have to go right back to the gym and do another 25 minutes on the cycle, you know? And then I do the cycle, and after I'm through, it says, you did 125 calories. 
but I did this fucking shit for 25 minutes, and all you're giving me back is you're taking off 25... Uh, Half a Milky Way. 125 gal, uh, uh, calories? Fuck yeah. you. This is well, you went six miles on. Uh, if it were a real bike. I said, if it was a real bike, I'd be all the way downtown by now. You probably but, burn half that many calories by lying there, you know? Yeah, yeah. So you have any little facts maybe you've lined up for us on this uh this Fun fact. No, I got. I got. Uh, we were talking in the last show about Mill Valley. Yeah. And uh, you know that uh, John Lennon lived in Mill Valley for a year. Did he really? Yeah. Uh, when? Uh, I think seventy-two or three. Huh. That's when. Uh, on Lovell, it's either Lovell or Lowell Street. It's right above was the that when he, it was, Wait a minute, that could have been closer to 75. I have a postcard in which he wrote to me and said, I hope I was good on your show. He said, I had enough trouble last year. And he was referring to all the problems he had in California, mm-hmm. you know, where he threw a bouquet of flowers into the pool and shit like that, you know, and he was getting drunk with Nilsson all the time, which is not a good idea. And maybe he lived up there for a short time, but I uh, seventy two would place him really back in the middle of Beatlemania, wouldn't it? Oh, what when was Beatlemania? Beatlemania was Beatles were over in seventy. So. Okay, yeah, you know, like he could have been there, but I don't think he lived there very long. All I know is that he and Yoko moved to New York. He was there, yeah, he was just there a very short time. I. Uh... It could have been during that time when Yoko threw him out of the house. Could have well been. You know. well, let's research that. Yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll send our uh, uh, crack research team in on that. Between that and that being the background for the invasion of the body snatchers, and uh, yeah, well, the I guy who wrote the Mill book, Valley had such a rich history. Well, it was the place that the guy I can't remember his name now who wrote the book was living when he wrote the book, and he kind of based it on Mill Valley. I, in fact, I don't know. He may in the book. He may have called it Mill Valley. I don't remember uh, because I never read the book. But uh, he, uh, you know, he based it on on Mill Valley, and I figured, well, if anybody was going to be like uh, immersed, emerging from a pod, it would be the people that live in Mill Valley. You know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Probably all the people that you know work at Google. God, I, are these, uh, you, you're dealing with the people from Google seems to be the main person they're arguing about, although you remember our building where we used to do Live 105, that really scuzzy studio we had? On 9th Street. On 9th Street is now uh, Twitter. That's Twitter, it? yeah. We yeah. got the big sign as you roll by there. Yeah. Uh, that used to be what they called the Merchandise Mart. That's where people people who had uh, furniture stores went and bought their furniture for their stores, you know. Uh, but uh, and we had our studios in the bottom floor of that, and uh, that is now Twitter. And where is Google? Google is uh, Google's in Mountain View. They have some satellite offices up here. Well, yeah, Facebook in Palo Alto or Menlo Park. Yeah, but didn't they move all a lot of their people into San Francisco though and open up San Francisco offices? That's they do, they've got some small offices here, but the big ones in Mountain View. They're still down there. But so, they've got, uh, most of their employees live here, and they've got these gigantic buses that take them to work every day down to Mountain View oh, in Silicon okay, Valley. Okay. So if they stop Which, those buses, maybe those people will leave and go back down to Silicon Valley. And the buses use the Muni stop. They just take the city over. and. Yeah. I, I, we had Silicon Valley, and then, you know, down in, the, down in L.A., uh, in uh, the San Fernando Valley is where all the porn films were made. And so they renamed that Silicon Valley. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. Of course, San Francisco used to be a good town for porn. Uh, we're, I remember a story about you trying to do a set at the Mitchell Brothers. Oh, yeah, it was 86. And, and what's-his-name was there, the writer. The crazy writer. Uh, they were having the Mitchell brothers had just opened their theater. They had a they had a private party before their big opening the next week, and they they hired three comics: me, Frank Prinzi, and uh, somebody else. Yeah, but and we were just performing for the the dancers and the employees. 
And I got heckled by Hunter Thompson. That's what I was. That's the story you told you me. You got a great memory, yeah. Yeah, he heckled you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Hunter fucking Thompson. Everybody idolizes this guy, and ever since you told me that story, I've actually hated him. Really? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, sometimes hecklers think they're helping you, you know, and sometimes mm -hmm. hecklers are just assholes. Right. And he was being just an asshole, wasn't he? I think so, yeah, but he's probably loaded so you, well i mean that's no excuse not to my pal who who heckles larry bubbles brown <laughs> you're heckle proof <laughs> i mean do, have you do you do you get hecklers very rarely because your act your act is kind of structured so it's heckle proof because oh yeah I, they, I, uh, I don't they feel sorry for me more than anything <laughs> yeah exactly you can't heckle somebody you take pity on so mm -hmm. you know then you engender that spirit that makes us want to mother you. Um, Let's hope so. Yeah. So I mean, that's a that's. God, a, I'd forgot a hundred times. I forgot about that. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, uh, and uh, that that uh, when I heard that man, I I I said if I ever meet up with Hunter Thompson, I'm going to tell him to go fuck himself. I never did meet up with him, however. So, whatever. But you did. And again, another suicide. <laughs> <laughs> he was a suicide, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you know how they, uh, they, what they did with his ashes? Uh, I should know this. I don't. See, we always get into the morbid stuff, folks. So yeah, exactly. Stick around. It, uh, Hunter Thompson's ashes, if I'm not mistaken, were put in a fireworks thing, and then they sent it up, and it exploded into a bursting flare of fire and you know whatever fireworks do and that scattered the ashes everywhere that's a good way to go yeah yeah and uh who who there was somebody who wanted to get his ashes buried in space and they did it and i'm trying to remember uh might have been might have been gene roddenberry or somebody like that that uh, sounds familiar yeah yeah um so Whatever, I I don't want uh, a girlfriend wants to wants to cremate me. I mean, if she beats me to it, if I beat her to it, uh, she wants to cremate me, and I I don't know if I want to be cremated. Does that sound like a good idea to you? Well, it sounds better than uh, like the MRI we we're talking about. I've got a fear of being close. I don't want to be buried. That freaks me out. Yeah. So, I mean, I suppose we don't know what's happening to our body once we're gone. But Didn't they just put but, us in ice on display like Lennon? Well, let's, let's just assume for a moment, okay, that there is something after life. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't something after life. We don't know. There are, you know, there, there are forces at work in the universe, things like... Uh, uh, you know, different dimensions and crap like that, and there's supposedly as many as nine different dimensions or something like that in string theory. And uh, there's another you in another dimension, but probably not doing the same thing. All right? And so I'm figuring maybe you just migrate over to one of those other dimensions or something. I don't know. But we don't know completely what happens. I don't believe in heaven and all that crap, all right? No. Yeah. But I do believe there could be some kind of scientific answer to what happens after you die. Uh, of course, you can't remember what it was like before you were born, so it's probably the same as that. All That's right. what I'm guessing it's going to be like. Yeah, nothing. That void of having never existed. All right. So, uh, but let's just say for grins that there is a higher power or there is a heaven. And now you've just given away your retina. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be... <laughs> You can't see your new world. Oh, and by the way, you can take, you can harvest my organs. Okay, so my kidneys gone. Now I'm, I'm going. I'm, I'm, I'm in heaven, and they go. I'm sorry, you're going to need a seeing eye dog up here. Uh, you're, you're blind. Dialysis. You know, so I'm just thinking. You know, uh, do I really want to do anything that's going to affect what's going to happen after that? So if you cremate me, there's no way anything can happen with this. I, I don't know. I don't. I have no answers, folks. Yeah. You know. I just, I just absolutely admire religious people who have this dogged religious belief that when they die, they're going to be with grandma. 
You know? yeah, it's <laughs> amazing that uh, people can hold on to a fairy tale like a pit bull. And <laughs> it's amazing. And it's amazing how many people we kill over that, that silly you know, yeah. nonsense. I mean, how many? My of- fear is there's going to be an afterlife, and it's going to be worse than this one. Oh, that's 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 uplifting. That's you. <laughs> that's you, Bubbles. It's, there is an afterlife, but it's probably more horrible. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, if uh, you, what what would be more horrible, going to hell or going to heaven? Because in heaven, you'd have to sing all those fucking songs and play a harp and hang around with people on clouds, and and they were all goody goodies, you know. I remember when I was a kid, someone told me they were talking about heaven. Somebody's parents say, oh, you go there and you live forever. And it just, to me, it just sounded really depressing. My question is, can I jerk off in heaven? <laughs> Will they allow me to jerk off in heaven? If they won't allow me to jerk off in heaven, I'm sure I can jerk off in hell. <laughs> Jerking off is very important to me, okay? It's a very Gotta clean the pipes. Huh? Gotta clean the pipes. Gotta cl- clean the pipes, you know. Um... So, you know, but I mean, I just, uh, and, and, you know, uh, I have a friend who just had his prostate removed. Well, when he dies, he doesn't have a prostate, so he better go to heaven, you know, because he's going to have no use for that prostate in hell, you know, so he, he, or he could use it in hell. I wonder if they let you jerk off in hell, do they? Or, or would hell tell you, you, no jerking off here? Probably encourage it. They would probably encourage it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the devil's, I think the devil's maybe a good guy. You know, after all, he was an angel. That's true. Yeah. And uh, uh, he, he was just sent down there by Dad to run the place, you know, to met out. Oh, you've got to wonder, how did, this, how did religion start? It's just well, beyond reli- me. Religion, okay, this is going to make a lot of people mad, but I, have I ever cared? Religion uh, is a con. And it's a con by the people administering the religion to keep having a job. Does that make sense? Kind of, yeah. Because what are they selling? They're selling something here. And what they're selling is eternal life. That's their product. And if you do everything, if you come to church on Sunday and you leave money in the plate and uh, you keep me employed, uh, you're going to wind up going to heaven. That's what happens in the afterlife. Of course, in the afterlife, you die and none of that comes to pass. But yet, I feel sorry for myself because I don't believe in any of that crap. And so, therefore, I have to live with the idea that when I die, I'm just going to be worm mulch, you know? And uh, uh, I wish I had some kind of belief that at least was would guide me to the grave, would make me leave this world with a smile on my face, and then, of course, after it was over, I'd find out it was all a fucking lie. Yeah. But, but nevertheless, something would would ease me for that, and that's what religion does. It eases you to the the. It should ease you uh, to uh, into the eventuality of death. In fact, I think all religion is based on death. On the fear of death. Yeah, it, it kind of it's it's good to control people too because it keeps you in line while you're alive. So. Yeah, but what they're doing is they're you know it's kind of like I was listening to Trump uh, today, and he was saying how you know if we don't do what we're doing now, we're going to have millions of people crossing that border. Well, there's no proof that a million people would cross across that border all of a sudden because you didn't stop them. Okay. But what he's doing, there was an old story, I call it the uh, Bell the Cat scenario. And what it is, there was a mouse and he wanted to be king. So he told all the other mice, there's a cat outside the mouse hole. And if if I go out and bell that cat, every time he's out there, you'll hear the bell. Okay? And you'll know there's a cat outside the mouse hole. I'll go out and bell the cat if you'll make me king. So he goes out there, there's no cat. He rings the bell a couple of times, puts it down, leaves, comes back, and says, I belled the cat. And they make him king. Well, that's exactly what Trump is doing with this whole thing about a million Mexicans storming over the border. You know, he's creating a scenario. And so religion has a lot to do with that. You mm-hmm. know, it, it tells you what could happen to you if you don't follow the rules. And uh, I think people should be moral on their own rather than have somebody dictate. They should, although it's it's uh, it's kind of depressing when you find people 
I'm sure you know people are very intelligent and they're very religious. I don't know too many very intelligent people uh, who are religious. Uh, I, I know people who are religiously observant, you know, but I don't think they believe in a heaven or hell. Okay. Uh, so uh, I say, if you can be a good person on your own, God bless you. If you can't be, then why should we enforce it on you? You have to, right. you have to learn how to be a good person, right? Anyway, with that, we've given moral judgment. That on today. that bright note, <laughs> we bright note. trashed your religion. <laughs> yeah, r religion sucks, and we're all going to die. And uh, uh, Larry and I will come when he comes back next time. Join us once again as we depress the living shit out of you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the always funny and enlightened, enlightened, <laughs> whatever. Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Bubs. Thanks, Alex. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabby, the Great American Broadcast Network. And hello, everybody. How are you? Wait a minute. i got to turn on the light. Otherwise, a girlfriend will be mad at me because she bought that and she insists that I light it up before I go on the air. A little rough time getting on the air tonight. Certain people said it felt like Groundhog Day. Yes, I, I understand that. Only uh, we aren't playing I Got You, Babe, over and over again. No, I just had a problem uh, getting the show started correctly. And once I got it started correctly, this is for the video. Uh, uh, it uh, <laughs> All of a sudden, I, I tried something, and I got this horrible noise and sound. and So I just started the whole show over again. Okay, so if for the, now for those of you who are watching like on, on uh, Facebook later on, or for those of you who are watching later on on YouTube for the, uh, um, the actual recording, you won't know any of that went on. But if you listen to the uh, video of the program as it started from the very beginning, you will hear the whole thing go on. So I, I don't know what to suggest to you, but uh, it might have been like Groundhog Day. Anyway, let me uh, let me go to the uh, Skype lines here. Uh, see if I can open them up. I'm depressed today. I'll tell you why later. It's, I'm, well, of course, I'm always depressed about stuff, right? Wouldn't be another day with Alex unless I was depressed about some deal or something that was going on. Um, uh, but uh, I, I, you know, at the time that I'm waiting for calls p and people to call, I don't know if I want. Yeah, okay. I bought this uh, this thing yesterday, uh, an iPhone X, and I got with it a for for two hundred dollars. I got a new iPad, which is their cheapest iPad, but it's still uh, it's all the iPad I need. Okay, um, and uh, after spending almost five hundred dollars on the money for the iPads and the uh, uh, the uh, cover for this and uh, they put some plastic on the front of this and on the front of the iPad and the iPad case and one thing or another I spent five hundred and twelve dollars yesterday only to get from uh, AT&T uh, my prospective bill which for the first month is going to be two hundred and seventy eight dollars because there are a whole bunch of charges and I understand that okay uh, but then uh, uh, then mo every month after that, it'll be $198. And I went, what? The guy told me it was going to be two fifty. Uh, two, what, what it was it? One fifty one, and uh, now it's going to be one ninety eight. You know, and uh, so I just I went ballistic. And the guy at uh, I called the guy over at the AT and T store, and he said, oh well, they they're, they're probably just charging you some stuff that doesn't exist anymore, like previous business you did with them or whatever. Uh, he said, wait until it, it all sorts itself out. But he said, I'll send you the the actual estimate. And the estimate was $141 plus tax, which comes out to about $165 a month. But it, it's still, it's you know, for a guy on a fixed income, I, 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 I get pissed off at every penny. So, you know, what have you. Hey, here's Tom Yamaguchi, ladies and gentlemen, just in time to hear me gripe. Well, let's be depressed together tonight, Alex. Oh, why? Uh, was it was it today a depressing day? Uh, politically? Yeah. 
Plus for me. Uh, yeah, it's a depressing day, but, uh, you know, who, who needs abortions, you know? Who needs gays being able to get married? Uh, who needs... Who needs public employee unions? Huh? Who needs, who needs pu- public employee unions? Yeah, fuck them. Fuck I'm them. a member of a public employee union. Ah! <laughs> You know, I mean, um, it's all it's all going to hell in a handbasket. And then, of course, you've got Kennedy um, deciding to retire, which, you know, congratulations to him. He should spend some of his later years in leisure, unlike me. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, uh, but, uh, you know, everybody's depressed about that because at least he was the swing vote. You know, you can never know which way he was going to go on something. Um uh, so anyway, uh, that uh, yeah, it's, it's it, it yeah, it was a very depressing day for that. But I I have more my own stuff to be depressed about, so I wouldn't uh, you know <laughs> I, 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 I can't be concerned about the state of the nation anymore because quite frankly, how much longer am I going to live? You know, <laughs> and and why spend that time worrying about well, the future of this country when there's no future for me? That's right. You don't have kids. You don't have grandkids. Well, even if I did, you know, I mean, I would just be, I, I look, hey, I warned you, everybody. I, I did my part, you know. Tell me about it. You know, I've been warning people for years about the inequities in this country and, and, and the, the uh, inequality and stuff. And, and uh, you didn't believe me. And finally, uh, you guys elected a fucking Nazi, you know. Who engenders? No, who no enge- who, actually not. Remember, Keith, remember, there were three more million more of us than there were of them. We just it, weren't. It doesn't matter. It, the it, right it, it's the fucked up rig system that got him elected. Okay? Right. Yes. All right. So whether we like it or not, he won fair and square by the rules of the game. Okay? To say that 3, 000, 3 million more people voted for him, and maybe it was more even, and we don't even know. Uh, well, three million more for her. For 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 you know for her, uh, doesn't mean shit to a tree because she didn't win by the rules, okay, right. of the game, yeah. and and I hold her in in uh, in, in as responsible for that, you know. Uh, I think her people uh, didn't know how to play the game, and uh, she didn't know how to play the game, and she played it very badly. Uh, uh, he was playing it to win. He was playing it to rejigger all the electoral votes and things like that. She was out to win. You know, I'm going to win. Well, you won. But you didn't win. You're not president. And I think she let us down. I thought she was a terrible candidate. Well, I let you down too then because I worked for her. Well, I mean, who are you going to work for, <laughs> you know? Who were you going to work for? I mean, did you work for Bernie when he was uh, going up against her? I did not. Uh, other people in my union were, were Bernie supporters, and I was sympathetic. I said, I, you know, given the choice, I thought that, that Hillary Clinton would have been the best president of all the candidates. But I told my, 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 my other union people, I said, if Bernie Sanders wins the nomination, I promise I will work just as hard to elect Bernie as I will for would for Hillary. Yeah, yeah. And and so, and I was willing to keep uh, to 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 do that because there, there's no way was I'm going to to, to sit back and, and, and do nothing while 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 Trump was uh, doing what he was doing. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know why I think she lost. I've always felt with Hillary, you didn't know what you were getting. Uh, I never felt she was genuine enough that I, I knew that what she was and, and uh, what she was going to be if she was president. On the other hand, there were people who knew exactly who Trump was, so they felt safer with that, you know, that they knew what he was. You know, and he, and he turned out to be, he, you know, I can't say he lied to become president. He's lived up to all his asshole promises. Mm-hmm. He's doing exactly what he said he was going to do. Yeah. So it's no surprise. Yeah. But, of course, that's the reason we all fought against him. Mm-hmm. But, you know, what I think he's brought to this nation, which is terrible, and I can say it tonight because Phil isn't here to argue with me, so screw him. Uh, uh, it, it, what, I, uh, what I didn't, um, oops, 
that isn't what I wanted to do. See, I'm doing all kinds of screwball stuff here. Um, um, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, now I forgot what I was going to say. Where was I going with that? Something about Trump. Uh, 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 it, uh, oh, yeah, what Trump has done, what Trump has done is he has... He has lower, completely lowered the bar for public discussion. Uh, did you see that fight between a Latino and a woman that was videoed where she was yelling and screaming at the Latino guy that they were, that, you know, all you people are rapists? She was literally uh, uh, reciting the, mm -hmm. the Trump playbook. You're rapists, you're murderers, you're this, you're that. And the guy said, no, we're hardworking people. You know, turns out he wasn't even a, 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 an, a an alien. He was born here, I believe, and uh, has, is a citizen of the country. And yet she, because he was Mexican, she was reciting the, the Trump playbook. And that was terrible. It was just terrible because it showed that what he's done is he has given a sense of permission to people who are ugly, horrible people to be exactly as ugly as whore and horrible as they want to because he's their leader. Yeah. No, I didn't see that video. All we get here is the woman complaining about people barbecuing at Lake, Lake Barrett. So <laughs> oh, oh, really? Oh. Yeah. No, I yeah, know. That, this that, was on the news tonight. It made the national news, as a matter of fact. Okay. Uh, I, it was so ugly. It was so horrible. They didn't even know who the woman is. They, she she left that after she said what she had to say, and they don't know who she is. Yeah, but th this is happening all the time. I mean, you know, this is the latest flavor of the day. Yeah, I but, mean, but he's giving he, thousands of these things where people are yelling and screaming at each other. Go back to where you came from. You know, it's yeah. like it's like no, you well, go he, back where you came from. You he, know? He's giving that sense of permission. Yeah. You know, and that's what's so terrible. Uh, here comes Jeff Stein, by the way. Let me let's add him to the group. There we go. Wait a minute. There we go. Okay. Uh, and then uh, all the pictures jigger around for the first time. Hello there, Jeff. Good evening, everybody. Yeah. yeah. So he gave he gives us you know he gives a sense of permission, and it's horrible. It's just disgusting, and it's vile. I, you know, what are we going to do about it? What can you do about it? You know, oh, let's, let's, you know, because the Democrats are going to fuck up this fall. I just know it. You know? Uh, and, and they're going crazy. The Democrats are going crazy. What happened in New York? What happened in New York with that woman who got, who, who went after the congressman who's been in there for 20 years and, and she beat his pants off? with no money to spend on advertising. Well, have you seen this woman? She's really good. Yeah. She's really, really, really good. Yeah. And he's probably, I don't know, I've never heard him. Uh, I probably should be aware of him because he was the next in line for Nancy Pelosi's job. Uh, but uh, uh, he's probably just an old Democratic hack. And she wasn't. She was a young, smart, I think she's a Latino woman who who uh, who beat him by just being good, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. Well, you know, I, unfortunately, I, I really didn't follow that that race, but I see sort of some parallels with with what's uh, what's going on here in California, particularly with our uh, top two primary, which is really shaking up th things good and. I mean, I consider the shakeup to be good. I mean, now, let, let's uh, I explain this to people simply, elsewhere in the country because they may not understand the concept it, of the top is, two uh, primary. Instead, instead of the the typical uh, primary where Democrats uh, go for their nomination, yeah. Republicans go for, and then whoever wins each of those primaries goes on to meet each other from each party. Yeah, this one is that everybody's on the ballot. And regardless of party, and then the top two uh, vote getters actually go ahead and continue on November, and actually 
you know, actually. So conceivably, running. they could be two Democrats going against each other. As a matter of fact, there's a number of elections right now. Our Senate, uh, uh, our lieutenant governor's race, a number of races where our, our Democrat against Democrat. But the one I was thinking of is actually a congressional race. And that's where uh, Mike Honda was there for many years. Mm -hmm. And Ro Khanna was able to finally uh, become elected. And basically, it, was, it wasn't that Mike Honda was a bad guy. He was a good guy. He was a progressive guy. You know, he was proud of a, a transgender grandchild, something like that. Yeah. I mean, he was good at a lot of things. But unfortunately, a lot of times, a lot of these people get complacent they're not they lose interest they just keep running and running and running and Rokana, i mean they they did everything they could to to vilify they called him republican and now when he said what is he he's funny he's funny for net neutrality i mean he is just about as radical as anyone in congress right now and and that's that's more the kind of primaries we we need contested primaries where people are willing to challenge people who are just like they might have been great at their day, but it's time for them to move on, you know. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with age. Yeah. I mean, it just has to do with, you know, with they just gotten too yeah. too complacent, too settled in. Uh, Jeff. Yeah. Well, I mean, yes. The biggest problem is they want to keep doing it. Even though they're bored with it, or or uh, the, the people who live there are different now, and in New York was a tremendous change in twenty-seven years. That guy has been there at twenty-four well, years. I I think the very thing that got Trump elected or got people to vote for Trump is the same thing that got this woman elected. I think people are just sick. Of politics as usual. Now, yeah. if you sign up for something that isn't politics as usual, sign up for the right thing. In this case, this woman seems to be the real deal and seems to be the right thing. Trump was not the right thing, okay? But they, they, they're just tired of, of, of politicians going to Washington and not doing shit. They work for six weeks and then they take another six weeks off to go back home, you know? And we to get nothing done. Tell me something Congress has done. The 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 the, uh, the tax overhaul. I got to tell you, this tax overhaul is going to be the ruination of this country. Already, they're talking about trying to do away with Medicare and Medic uh, Medi uh, Medi uh, Medicare and uh, Medicaid uh, because uh they they don't have the money for it because they're going to have less money because of all the taxes they're going to not be getting well fuck yes. you you assholes you should have figured that one out mr trump mr moneybag should have known that well he did know it yeah they did figure it out <laughs> but he said you know what we'll just reduce the amount of insurance and benefits for the poor people Screw them. It isn't even poor people we're talking about. We're talking Medicare. We're talking about you and me, Jeff. Absolutely. We're talking about you and me. Absolutely. And, and quite I frankly, I mean, if I didn't have Medicare and I didn't have my SAG after a, a supplemental, which is was a godsend, mm -hmm. uh, I, when I got sick, I don't know what I'd do. You know? So what are people going to do if they well, don't have I'm Medicare? My my 20% uh, addition yeah. that you have to pay. Yeah. The safety uh, filter. The, well, the supplemental. And that's yeah. what that's what, uh, that's what what sag after it gives me. And I only pay like $2,000 a year for it. You know, and I get all my prescriptions and I'm getting them really cheap. And I'm get, get all, you know, I get that other 20% taken care of. So I'm very fortunate, but I need Medicare. I couldn't keep myself in good health if I didn't have Medicare. And doctors would probably be going out of business, some of them, if Medicare didn't exist. You know, Trump doesn't think ahead on this stuff. And then the latest thing, the thing today that got me, was Harley said that they're going to go build a lot of their stuff over in, uh, in Europe because mm -hmm. 
they don't want to have to pay the steel tariffs to build their motorbikes. And uh, motorbikes, motorcycles. I should say that because otherwise the Hells Angels will kill me for calling Harleys a motorbike. Uh, and uh, uh, Trump threatened Harley. You do that and there's going to be hell to pay. You know, People aren't going to buy your stuff. We're going to make sure they don't buy your stuff. I mean, what? It, that's not your job as president to threaten the major corporation for making a, a business decision because of some kind of <clears throat> deal you made that fucked them up. You know, they've had a hard enough time surviving, Harley. And they're trying to survive by having to leave the country, and they're not going to be the first ones. Yes, Jeff? The, 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 the one good thing about their business, these five years, ten years, whatever it is, is that a lot of people in Europe are buying their motorcycles. Mm -hmm. And the people in, in Europe said, well, what? You know, it's okay that we can buy this guy's Harley Davidson stuff. But we're going to charge you another hundred dollars for it, or, or another ten percent, right. or whatever. Right, it is. exactly, exactly. And, and the guy who runs Harley goes, "Oh man, that, I'm, that's going to really screw my business. A lot of people won't buy it anymore." Well, they were going to put uh, the the Europeans were going to put a tax on a tariff on yeah. all the Harleys going over to Europe, because right. that was one of the companies they targeted as being p purely an American company. And what happened is because of Trump and his, his wonderful business sense, he's literally driving a major American company, a made-in-America company, out of here. Would you yeah. agree? Kevin, you know a lot about this because you're a big Harley guy. Yeah, I, I sent you that article. Did you read it? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. he was, he was threatening them and saying that yeah. uh, if they do that, he's going to make them pay. Yeah. He basically threatened them and said he's going to make them pay. And if they decide they're going to do that, that they, he's going to tax the crap of them when they try to bring stuff back. Well, how, do you know of any president who's ever gone after a company in particular with some let kind alone, of threat let like alone, that? Yeah, strong arm them. Uh, an American company strong arming them. Yeah. That's like BS. And mm -hmm. it's not going to end there because it's, that's just hardly starting. There's all kinds of other companies that are that are saying the same thing, that they're they're looking at the same kind of decision that Harley is making, and I think they're sitting back and going, okay, what's going to happen with them? Mm -hmm. And when they're seeing this, you know, it's the same decisions they're making, and their business decisions, the same kind of business decisions that Trump would make. Yeah. You know, so why is all of a sudden everything wrong now? Well, do you really think, for instance, that Apple is going to make every one of these in the United oh, hell States? No. Do you think they're going to make iPads in the United States? Well, he thinks so. I got I mean, the stuff that he's saying, like, you know, all of a sudden, you know, he's bringing, they're bringing billions of dollars back. That's it's such bullshit. They you know, build, they're they bringing build. billions of dollars back and they're going to build all these plants here and they're going to make all this stuff here. That's horse crap. I mean, sure they're not going to do all that stuff. They're going to bring some money back, but no, they're not going to change their way of doing business. Well, a while back, uh, 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 Trump uh, wrongly said that Apple was going to pay, spend $320 billion in the United States. But that wasn't the story. The story was is that now they could bring the money back home. They were going to bring $320 billion here. Now, uh, uh, Apple, Apple has always been known as a company who doesn't spend their profits. They're going to put it in their pockets. Exactly. Exactly. You know. Now, so I... I, 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 I a tax break on that one. Because of the little problem I have with AT&T telling me a price, my price was more than the guy told me it was going to be right. for this every month. Like, it was going to be $188 instead of 100 and, I don't know, he said 51 they switched on you, huh? Because I was I was at Costco today, and I and I was thinking about you. I was going, uh, some guy was talking about the phone, and I was eavesdropping over it. And the, the gal was telling him, "Oh, you can do this, and you can do this." I'm going, "I wonder if this is what Alex got." <laughs> well, I got an iPhone X, and I got to admit, it, it's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, because I, I've been tr waiting to get a good deal on one. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, you could call this kind of a good deal because before I used to pay five hundred dollars to get the phone. 
Yeah. Okay. And now you don't have to pay anything to get the phone. You just pay it off over. I'm paying it off over two years. Okay. Yeah, that's but I was told that my said. that my price would be like one hundred and forty one dollars plus tax. Okay. And I have it in writing. So if there's a problem, I'm going back to AT and T. Then they sent me a thing today saying your average monthly bill will be. And I called him and he said, well. He said, that's just something they're sending you based upon the fact that you already have business with them. And once everything settles, it'll probably it'll, <coughs> it'll go down to 100, about 165 with tax a month, which is OK, because I was, it's the same I was paying before. I paid 135 for the service without the phone, without buying the phone, and uh, another 30 a month for the tablet service. So it, this brings it about the same amount of money and I'm getting all new stuff here but all I'm saying is is that if you you know if you think Apple is going to stop making stuff in Europe uh, I mean in uh, in Asia you're wrong but if no. you don't think the price isn't going to go up you're wrong too you know yeah it's 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 amazing the way he's working stuff around he, he, the, the whole thing the whole reason that past administrations haven't change stuff so much the way he's changing them now is because there's consequences to it and you you can do something here but it's going to cost you there yeah and that's the way that's the way it goes but you're going to do knee-jerk reaction and 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 you know give everybody 1200 bucks back on their paycheck they're going to pay for it somewhere else that's like the garbage thing i was telling you about last night yeah all that garbage that we're we've been sending over there to save money now we're going to pay for it on the back end because our garbage bills are going to go up two and four and five, six bucks. Yeah. Because we have to process it here now. And that's going to take another two bucks off your thousand dollar paycheck. And it's going to go on and on and on with, uh, you know, uh, just stuff we buy here and there and everywhere. Terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely so terrible. There's your thousand bucks. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so anyway, so I got screwed on this phone. But, you know, I, what it'll the hell? Settle. Yeah, I'm sure it'll settle. I mean, I'm sure I can. Uh, I'll call AT&T and say. You might I, be mildly screwed. I'll say I've got it in writing here that this is what it was going to cost me. And uh, the, the whole estimate and whatever. And I was told this is what it was going to cost me. That's why I made the deal. So you got to make good on it. Otherwise, I'm going to the fucking attorney general. Yeah, oh, I'm going. I'm going through the same thing with one of those referral things with a solar company right now. Oh, really? And I caught. I I stirred up all kinds of crap. Yeah, uh, Jeff, you had your hand up. I, I would recommend that you write him a, a an email or a letter saying about this is what you said, and this is what I expect you to honor. Well, I I called the the, the sales guy today, and that's why he sent me the estimate. He sent me the actual workup on. On how much it should cost, so that if if it if I don't get uh, uh, about that plus it's one hundred and forty one dollars plus tax, which is about another twenty five dollars. Uh, uh, I if I don't get that, I'll I'll get a hold of AT and T and say, here's the paperwork I have now. You got to make good on this deal, and mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. You know, I, I'm an old guy. I have nothing to do with my days. <laughs> that's, know, that's what I told them. To. Except write fucking letters and call <laughs> them, and <laughs> you know, and, and maybe go by their place uh, and and after the gym while I still smell. Well, you know you what know. I throw these guys? I threw them. I said I'm going to seven on your side. I'm going to go tell them on TV. And all of a sudden, they got their attention. Well, yeah. you know, I mean, uh, I, I got nothing to do. Yeah, I mean, I. The problem with a lot of these uh, people who are, are selling phones, like this, this AT&T store is an AT&T store, but it's not owned by AT&T, nor is it run by AT&T. It's run by somebody else. And uh, they've got to be responsible for what those people do, you know. They can't just sit here. Yeah, they're representing them. Huh? They represent them. They represent them, right. And I was I was sold a, a bill. Listen, if I had been told that it was going to cost as much as it said on this bill, I would have probably told them, forget it. You know? Uh, either that or I'll pay it out over three years. I did it so I'd pay it out over two years. And then after two years, the phone is mine. Or after one year, I can turn it in and get the newest phone. Although I don't know why I want to do that, because I usually go about three years on a phone. But... Uh, 
Anyway, all I'm saying is is that uh, 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 these decisions that have been made are pretty pretty terrible uh, on the part of Trump. And everybody thinks, oh, he's trying to protect American jobs. He's trying. No, we're going to lose American jobs as a result of this. You know, it, in the beginning, everybody sits around going, oh, maybe it's okay. Maybe it's going to be okay. Maybe he knows what he's doing. Now, look at his business history. Does he know what he's doing? Come on, he's yeah. never known what he was doing. Uh, that's why people in New York laugh at Donald Trump because we knew what a canard it was that he was some kind of Mr. Monopoly, you know, that he really knew business and he was a good businessman. No, he, he projected the image of a good businessman so he could sell his name to buildings, you know, okay. and he became a brand, whether it was yeah. steaks or ties or, or whatever. And will he stop sitting with his hands in a V below his penis? I'm getting tired of that. He it's, it's, like it, yeah, no, he no but, this, but he does this. Too. Really he bad he does this. Let me stand up a little bit. He does this, right? Is he sitting there? And I'm going, what are you trying to do saying? It's this big? Is that what you're saying? I mean, is that the stance you're taking? What is that? You know, we used to go to uh, uh, body language classes and business and crap like that, and this was the worst thing they told you. Oh, this you one, don't yeah. sit. You don't sit like this because this is telling you I'm an asshole. Get out of my fucking way. Do you way. know who did that? That exact stance? Uh, Mussolini. There you go. <laughs> Mussolini would always look at people and go, you know. That's like, that's, that, they told you that was the worst. Yeah. Put your hands on the table and cross your hands. You see the other people doing that. You just, you're polite. You put your hands, and, you know, on the table or, you yeah. know, whatever. But you don't sit there with your hands crossed. That means you're, you're in there for a for war. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and then now we also have the, uh, is anybody else going to call, by the way? We could use some more callers. It would be really nice. Uh, but the, the people we've got are terrific. I could live with them. Okay. But I would, I always like a nice spirited conversation. Although Phil. Oh, Renee tried calling in last night. She <laughs> kept going sideways. Yeah. Phil <laughs> isn't here tonight. Uh, so, uh, which it means the coast is clear, folks. Um, <laughs> Uh, you can get a word in edgewise. Uh, it, it, uh, it, you know, I, I, um, did you have your hand up, Jeff? Yeah. Did, Alex, did you ever see this golf, golf course that he built in, in New York? It's actually in, in the Bronx. In the Bronx? What piece of shit that you cannot believe. How crappy... It is, and how lousy it looks. All I can imagine it is is it's the uh, uh, what, what's that game they used to play, base a kind of baseball game they would play the kids where they would use a fire hydrant as one base and something else. Oh yeah. I'm thinking that's how the golf course looked in the Bronx. <laughs> it was about the same. <laughs> yeah, stickball. They used to play stickball. Kind of maybe maybe it was the golf version of stickball. Yeah. yeah. Beer cans for bases and. <clears throat> and, hook up, uh, hook up the, like no the watering grass. system so, to a Oh, he's also praising. He's also praising Putin for what a wonderful job he's done with soccer. <laughs> and I'm going, Jesus Christ! And and now they're supposed to get together and have a meeting. Oh, the great diplomat is going to meet with uh, with the guy who's going to just take him to the fucking cleaners. <laughs> you know. Can I hang out with you, uh, Vladimir? Huh? Can I hang hang out with you? I want to hang out with you, Vladimir. Do a cartoon. Got a new friend in Jim, Kim Jong Un. Yeah, my friend's Kim Jong Un. I like Kim Jong Un. Oh boy. Or Chinese food. So you know, so now we got the Supreme Court. We got Kennedy leaving, yeah. which uh, you know, God bless him. He did an, he did a good job, and I always felt he was he was what I wanted justice to be. We knew where he stood politically, but he didn't always vote that way because he knew it was his job to interpret the Constitution. You know, very even, very even. Very even. And it, you know, it would be nice if he would uh, he would find someone similar to that uh, to replace him. But you know, that's not going to happen. My my suggestion was go back and look at Merrick Garland. There was a guy who basically was, <laughs> no, he was a right-winger 
who had a kind of open mind about stuff. He would, and I think <clears throat> I think he would actually pass muster. Yeah, but he'll never look at him. Hmm? <laughs> no, because Obama liked him. Yeah. 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 Uh, yes. Uh, yes, Tom. Yeah, he's already grilled up his list. I mean, he's he's already promised the 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 uh, the uh, the Federalist Society and uh, and the uh, the uh, right right wing. Uh, I don't want to the you know the the the, the religious right. He's yeah. already promised them the Supreme Court, and he's delivered one, and he's just going to keep delivering, you know, because that's what he promised him. Support me, and I'm gonna, and I'll, I'll, I'll deliver for you, and that's what he's going to keep somehow, doing. Somehow, somehow, um, we have to, the Democrats have to stall this whole thing. I don't know well, how you do it. I, I think you can find ways of doing it and stall it until the fall. The argument yeah. was thrown today at Mitch McConnell. That well, you said Merrick Garland couldn't be uh, considered because uh, you never you never appoint a Supreme Court justice in the last year of a presidency. Well, that's wrong. No. It actually has been done in the past. Yeah. Uh, uh, and and so somebody said to him today, well, don't you think it's wrong until the that you hold off and wait until the uh, the fall elections? He said, oh, it's a different thing altogether. <laughs> You, oh, I'm sorry. Now you know, it's different. now it's different. Yeah, now yep. it's all different. Fuck you, you weasel. <laughs> you fucking goddamn motherfucking cocksucking weasel. Now, 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 Alex, stay, don't, 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 don't uh, be harsh on uh, Elaine Chow's husband. She'll, she'll severely criticize uh, oh, you. Oh, I that. see, I see. Yeah, <laughs> Dragon Mom will come after me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. I, I just, well, he looks like, you know he looks like? Do you ever remember uh, in the comic books there used to be uh, a thing where draw, uh, draw, yeah. uh, draw me and it was like a turtle? Right. And he kind of looks like the turtle in those draw me and win a, win a scholarship uh, things. Uh, <laughs> right. But uh, that was, you know, he was, uh, he's just. But, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, Merrick Garland, for instance, was, uh, was someone who, who Obama actually put up because he thought he had the best chance of getting passed by both the Republicans and the Democrats, okay? And I think he would be a good choice for Obama because there w you know anybody Obama puts up, there's going to be a fight and there's going to be canoodling and there's going to be... Uh, and, and, you know, he, they should wait until after the election because I don't think that certain... Um, uh, congressmen and senators want to be put in the position of having to be on record as to how they voted for a Supreme Court justice in this election year. Even though to some people it would be wonderful, but to other people it wouldn't be, and they want everybody to vote for them that possibly can. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's a wise thing for them to even consider this before the fall election. Yeah. Yeah, but I think it's 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 really important that, that the Democrats do make a big deal of this because, you know, uh, we sh we should really treat the same si the situation the same we did in uh, 2016. If they're going to say, well, you know, we you know we can't do this because of, because of the election. I mean, when uh, when Scalia died, that was February that year. And this is we we're, we're already in the middle towards the end of the primaries, you know. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, but they, you know they said, oh well, uh, you you never do it in the last year of a uh, of, of a uh, of a term or of being a president, and that's wrong. They have in the past, so you know. Um, changing location, are you, Tom? Location, location, location. Uh, yeah. I mute myself. Okay. I just let in Pepper, our doggy, oh. our uh, the dog that we're sitting. Oh, we're I watching. see. You're sitting a dog. Oh, 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 oh. You see Pepper. Dog S sitting on see, you. That's now. a wonderful <laughs> thing about Skype. We have all kinds of things. We have people like Ray Rama uh, Renati uh, uh, bicycling last night uh, mm -hmm. in a gym, and we had Renee uh, trying to show us Hilo Hawaii. 
and uh, it's nice. And now we have a doggy who is overly affectionate. It's not even your <laughs> dog. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. That's yeah. Uh, nothing. That nothing more wonderful than dog spit. Dogs really feel that you want spit. Oh. What I what I well what I gets me is she likes to lick it's up inside my nostril. Oh really? Oh yeah. Uh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Very tough. Very tough. Um. Anyway, I uh, so where, where where was I? So um, uh, what else is happening in the news now? I guess it's just today was a real depressing day. And well, talk about the, the the union decision. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, now that means that the this kind of guts unions in government, right? Yes, yes. It means basically that people don't have to pay union dues, even though they're getting the benefits of the con of of you know increased money from a contract. So why why join a union? Well, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. What's that? And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, okay, so what this ruling said, and I don't understand why they made this ruling, to be honest with you, is, is and I didn't follow it that closely, so please uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, th this guy, uh, these, uh, these, uh, the unions are having a problem in that they, the, the, the unions that represent the government workers, uh, they can't collect dues they don't uh, from those people right and those people uh they can't collect dues and what was the other part of it they can't uh, uh they'll still benefit from the contract yeah but uh, they'll benefit but from the contract but there's one other thing the unions the couldn't union. do there was one other thing the unions couldn't do like involve themselves in political campaigns or something like well, that that's always been it's always I mean, been you can't yeah. For one thing, but why? Why? What was their thinking on why you can't have a union with government? I mean, you know, they hate uh, unions, huh? <laughs> they hate unions. I know. Well, it, they can hate <laughs> unions all they but like, it, but it, what is the constitutional misdeed that says you can't? Hello, by the way, Mr. Ritter. Um, what is the misdeed here of? Uh, of these unions charging dues for crying out loud. And then as you say, these same people getting the benefits of that union's work. Right, yeah. It doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, it doesn't mean that you can't, don't have to pay union dues, but it means you don't have to if you don't want to. Right. And how many people are gonna say, well, in that case, <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna yeah. pay union dues. And yeah. but But I can't understand what what they felt was constitutionally wrong with charging dues for a union that people join who get the you know get the pay set for their for their livelihood you know uh, it's just this uh, this concept of individual freedom people are free to be individuals and they don't have to do what the union tells them to do they are free Oh, good. Oh, God. It's, you know, it's a free country. Hell in a handbasket. <laughs> That's it. What, and what was the decision yesterday? There was an, another dis The decision yesterday was on... Uh, well, there was one on the California uh, abortion law. Or basically, it, basically, what it was saying, California passed a law saying that these religions that run uh, crisis pregnancy clinics, yeah, basically they had to tell them that 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 their service would not provide them with any abortion information. It forced them if they were going to run the clinics, they had to provide information where women can go to get an abortion. So it wasn't forcing these clinics to give. Yeah, but, no, but wait a minute, wasn't there a decision yesterday? I'm trying to remember what the decision was yesterday. See how my mind it flies. Couple decisions. Uh, I'm, 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 I thought they didn't have to give the information. Huh? I thought they didn't oh, have to give Yeah, and the, and the immigration and the. Uh, oh, the, the immigration the, thing. Uh, yeah, the immigration Muslim, thing. Yeah. Uh, how they could not see, how they could not see 
that that was in violation of religious freedom, I have no idea. Because he specifically pointed out Muslims. Yeah. You know, it was only in the revision later on that a lot of his a uh, lot of his republican boyfriends did not like where he had to revise it and pull it back from the way he had it that he included a few other countries that weren't muslim in order to make it more legal but you know what country and this is interesting what country isn't on that list uh, starts with an S. Yeah, it certainly does. Today. And and, <laughs> and where did what nine of the uh, of the uh, people who hit the uh, World Trade Center come from? Saudi Arabia. And yet we're going to protect America by allowing Saudis into this country. Yeah, you know what I don't like about it is the xenophobia that they've, you know, ginned up, where. You know, we're, we're doing this to protect you. Well, I didn't know that things were that terrible. I'm not walking outside and bombs are falling. You know, I mean, when's the, when's the last time you heard of a major bombing in America? Oh, I know when we heard of a major bombing in America. Uh, it was called Oklahoma City. Yeah. Yeah, uh, who did that one? It wasn't Saudis. It wasn't uh, Islamics. It was, uh, what? A Christian American? Well, I'll be. You know, how about the uh, how about the Olympic uh, um, um, uh, shootings in the Olympic Park? Uh, mm-hmm. I was there a few days earlier. I'm glad I wasn't there when they when the guns went off. Um, Eric Rudolph was a Christian yeah, right fundamentalist. Down the hill, right around the corner. Huh? What? It was their neighbor? <laughs> Eric Rudolph was your neighbor. No, he was from right around the corner, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Basically. Yeah. Uh, But all I'm saying is that when you think about protecting us, are you protecting us against these people? I don't think you are. Let me get my picture out of... uh, out of Mr. Ritter's face because it's I'm I'm interrupting him there. No, Mm -hmm. it was just badly framed so that uh, they couldn't see. How are you doing? Good. Is my audio working? Your audio audio is working beautifully. All right. Where are you today? Las Vegas. You're back in Las Vegas. Okay. Back and forth, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people, uh, a lot of celebrities dying lately here. So. Yeah, we have we have had a couple of celebrities die. We had Joe Jackson die today. Yeah. Uh, I, ran oh, into I didn't hear that. Uh, yeah. Or somebody, yeah, re- somebody. Uh, as I heard somebody put it finally. Uh, <laughs> who Vinnie else? Paul is a local guy. Who uh, he lived. Vinny Paul, he was a he was a mainstay at all the comedy shows. He's a famous rock and roller from Pantera, back from oh, 2001. Oh yeah, 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 the drummer, right? Yeah, we, uh, uh, yeah my we, friend we Bob. saw him everywhere. We, you always yeah. run into him. I ran into Joe Jackson in March. He looked about 75. He looked okay. Yeah, but uh, but he was dying then, I think. So. Yeah, yeah. but Vinny Paul was went to a Bobby Slayton show. Bobby was oh, saying yeah, that he, he had he, some he drinks. Probably saw them. Slayton 20 times. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. He just went to comedy shows over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Really? Car- Carrot Top, Amazing Jonathan, he was there constantly. Yeah. Amazing Jonathan's working Vegas? No, he, he worked Vegas 2001 to 2012 pretty regularly. Really? He did really, and then, really well. Yeah. Then what happened? Uh, I, what happened? He, he, I think he just left in 2012. He, he felt he uh, wasn't getting the... He didn't like the terms and all that, but he he had a big run here. So where is he now? I he's knew close. I knew the amazing Jonathan. I'm a friend of his. He's yeah. uh, he lives here in town and uh, he has a nice house out in Henderson. It, yeah. Well, yeah, he has some health problems and such, but he has health he, problems. He does, huh? Yeah. Well, send him yeah, my best, will you? Because I haven't seen him in years and years and years. Yeah. You know? He gets out once in a while. He does a special show every now and then. So. Yeah. Yeah. But he, he had like a 12, 13 year run almost almost every night. Yeah. Yeah. Him and Penn and Teller, Rita Rudner, they really. Uh, well, you, you know, yeah, but you know what really always worked in Vegas was a magic act. Yeah. You know, whether it was Siegfried and Roy or Penn and Teller or, uh, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, I, Cirque du Soleil almost falls into that category. I mean, it's, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yes, uh, Tom. I was just saying on the subject of death, we lost a, a New York radio guy named Dan Ingram. Dan Ingram. You right. know him? 
uh, I did not know Dan Ingram. By the time I got here, here I was. Who was I? I was talking. Who I was? I, I, was he talking about this last night? I can't remember. I was talking about it on the show, whether it was in one of the interviews I did or whatever. I, oh, yes, yeah, with an interview I'm doing tomorrow night. It's going to be on tomorrow night with Stephen Pearl. We brought up Dan Ingram, and the thing with you know, thing with radio personalities back in those days, and you'll probably know this, Chris is that you could be the biggest personality New York City ever saw and nobody ever heard of you in Chicago. Nobody right. ever heard of you, you know, in Philadelphia, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or there, you, oh, you get one national ad and that's all the other cities know you for. Yeah, he yeah. Make, Hawaiian Punch was his. Right, um, the Christmas uh, Story yeah. guy was... Well, that was, uh, uh, him, the, but, that yeah. of course was Gene Shepard. Uh, yeah. But they were local. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and and so when I came to New York, Dan Ingram wasn't even working here anymore, and I came to this town in, uh, what was it, 1969, uh, I think. Uh, and by that time, Dan Ingram, I don't think, was even working anymore on the air here. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so for as big as he was, he had stopped at that point. So I didn't know of Dan Ingram. I knew who he was. I knew that he was the biggest thing since sliced bread. I knew that he was, you know, but I didn't know him. Same thing with Gene Shepard, and I got to know Shep, okay? Mm. I got to know him, and mm. I, you know, but I wasn't impressed by knowing him. I just liked Gene Shepard, and we hung out, right? But mm. I didn't have a sense of history with these guys. Yes, Jeff? Jeff? Audio. No, he's yeah. yeah okay. Got it all. Yeah. Uh, Shep also used to be on. The, uh, he used to write a lot, and um, he was on the. Um, oh, what's the name of the guy in Chicago, who uh, always had the uh, nice-looking naked women. The nice looking so. naked women in Chicago? What what is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh you mean Hefner. Hefner, yeah. yeah. You Hefner. He wrote for Hefner. Oh, well he would write he, he was a he was a writer as well right. as doing his radio yeah. thing. And one of his books <clears throat> was called uh, uh, something all others pay cash, something yeah. uh, uh, it Not became became one of those stories in there became a Christmas story. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, but but all I'm saying is these guys were were not guys that I was you know enamored of because I didn't grow up with them. I they're kids. I knew guys here in New York who said when I was a kid I used to put on Gene Shepard's show because he used to go on like at nine o'clock at night or ten o'clock at night. Ten o'clock. And, and I would yeah and I ha would have to turn the radio on under my covers and listen to him. You know. <laughs> Um, uh, like I the, was one of those kids. Yeah, like the parents didn't notice the glow from the radio uh -huh. from under the sheets, but uh, and and that's how they would listen to Gene Shepard, and he was that that big a deal. But to me, Gene Shepard was the guy I used to have dinner with at Earl Dowd's house, you know. Yeah. And he still had a radio program, but I I knew him as that, you know. I always love to tell the story. I've told the story a dozen times. You've heard it, Tom. Mm -hmm. About how I was having dinner at Earl Dowd's house with, with, with Shep and a couple other people. And we're at the dinner table, and Shep is telling this story. Because Shep always told stories. And, you know, he, t he always it, it just elongated every story as much as he could. You know, like we came to a cross in the road, and I didn't know whether to go left or whether to go right. And my father couldn't figure out whether to go left or whether to go right. And, you know, and he'd, he'd go on forever. You know what I'm talking about, Jeff. <laughs> and he's telling the story, and it's it's fun, it's fine, but I'm getting tired of it, and I, we finished eating dinner, so I kind of excuse myself from the table, and I go into the into the living room, and I turn on the TV set, and it's the Joe Franklin show, who was another <laughs> New York institution, right? And who's his guest on the show, but Gene Shepard, and he's telling a story. And it's the same story he was telling at the dinner table. And I simply picked it up in the living room from where I left off. 
So, uh, but uh, but Shep was a, he was a he was a nice guy. You know, I liked him. Uh, well, I mean, I wasn't that close to him, but I knew him as a peripheral in my life. Uh, and but I never knew Ingram. And Dan Ingram died. Uh, what at eighty five? I think he was something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I um, do you remember Dan Ingram, Jeff? Well, I remember uh, him on, uh, on on the radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he, was. he does like uh, I think uh, music. Yeah, yeah. He was fa- he was very famous for being able to talk up and as we call it, kiss the vocal. In yeah. other words, talk yeah, over the beginning of the music while the music was starting, and then just keep talking right up to the point where the person starts singing. Yeah. And the only other person I knew who could do it that well was me. I used to be able to do that really well. And it was almost a, a game you played with yourself. How closely can I kiss the vocal? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and those were in the days when we talked at the beginning of records. Now they don't even talk at the beginning of records. You know, um, Mainly because they're not in the same room at the time the music's being played. Uh, they're all voice track. But uh, uh, Ingram was a, was a, was supposedly just great. You know, he's terrific. And uh, they installed him in the, uh, the National Radio Hall of Fame, which I have yet to ever be even considered for. And yet a lot of other idiots are, you know. So uh, people who gave far less to this business than I ever did. And I'm, am I bitter? A tad. Anyway. <laughs> Fuck them. Fuck So uh, you like life in Vegas, right, Chris? Uh, it's okay. It, uh, <laughs> I, could go any, I could go anywhere. I, I lived in Manhattan for seven years. Yeah. Uh, and Vegas, you appreciate the open space, but Manhattan has so much vibrancy and culture. And you know, my, it has culture. Vibrancy, uh, not like it used to. When okay. I When I first moved here... I had a love affair with New York City. I mean, yeah, you know, and it was dirty and it was dangerous and it was all those things. But I had a love affair with it. You know what I'm talking about, Jeff? Oh yeah, it, it, I grew up there. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was a love affair you had with with New York City, and uh, I had it. And um, I don't have that love affair anymore. I don't feel that way about New York any longer. It's just not the city it once was. It's it's a big city. It's it, it, the skyline is very modern now. You know they're building all these pencil thin buildings and shit like that. And you know uh, and I can see it all happening from my windows here. I have a great view um, of the skyline of New York. And I just I don't know. I just it um, it's just not the city it was. What can I say? I wish it was. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff. Um, my 14-year-old granddaughter is uh, going to be in the city for two weeks. Yeah. And she's uh, she's a dancer, and she's at the Joffrey. Yeah. Oh, good. Whatever that is. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, that's, and that's where told, this that's where this giant uh, this giant giraffe teaches kids how to dance. <laughs> the Joffrey. Boy, yeah. I'm gonna go there on Friday and figure it out. But, yeah. Uh, she calls up the other day. She goes, "We're on 42nd Street, having a great time." Yeah, but 40, how, 42nd how Roddy, Street. 42nd Street. Yeah, but it's not. It's not like it used to be. You know, 42nd Street used to be dirty and filthy. It used to be seedy. It was the crotch of America. It is. It was the underbelly of America. It's where all the evils of America were on display. And there was something wonderful about that. You know, there was something dangerous and wonderful about it. You know, the pimps and the whores and the whatever, the drug, drug dealers. And you say, well, Alex, that's wonderful. Yes, because it's like living on the edge, you know, and there's an excitement to that. And there was an excitement to living in New York, and there was a, a, a bravado to living in New York. And I also knew a lot of people, like the people who hung out with the Warhol crowd and so on, and those people. And it was all exciting and vibrant and inventive, and it's not that way anymore. 
You'd you go know. there and you'd survive. And then you'd come out and go, I was there. I know? survived it, yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. And I came out of New York a tougher person, I got to tell you. You know, I went to California and I said, these people are all suckers ready to be taken. You know. <laughs> yeah, there's places in San Francisco that you would do that as well. They weren't quite as rough, I'm sure. Oh, no, San Francisco were all pussies. Yeah, but you know. there were, there's places that were, you know, kind of rough. At least we call them rough. Well, you know? no, but when I'm talking about rough, I'm not talking about fist fight rough. No, I'm talking, I know what you're talking, I'm talking about. about business, places, well, no, bus areas. business tough. I yeah. learned to be business tough. Well, New York is, yeah, I'm yeah. sure. They, I don't know much about New York, but you know that there's stories that come out of there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, so, uh, you know, that was that was my life in New York, and I, uh, I, I, I will stand by it. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, it was it was quite something, uh, but it's not the same anymore, Chris. You know, it, it's nice. Yeah. You know, it's good. Go take a Gray Line tour. You know, and Broadway seems more about uh, not about talent. It's more about stars who are in vehicles. It's yeah, not, yeah. It uh, everything. It's not about achievement anymore. It's about success. Well, everything is a redo of something. Either it's a a, a stage version of a movie. You know, and then they bring in uh, somebody to, you know, they've got like, they've been doing the Carol King musical. You know who's starring in it right now? Supergirl. <laughs> oh, yeah. You got Mike Tyson doing a Broadway show. Is he doing a yeah. Broadway show? He did for a while. He did, he yeah, for a short doing time. monologues yeah. and people loved it. But Yeah. Well, I mean, at least that's original. Mm -hmm. Well, you know. Brechtian, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and uh, uh but everything else is like, you know, uh, oh, we're going to do a musical of this or that. I mean, my wife is going to see a musical that just won for uh, Best Musical, which is The Band's Visit, mm -hmm. which was a movie. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Uh, right. And nobody can come up with original ideas or original uh, concepts. It's just, you know. And then uh, Disney, of course, does all their animated films as stage shows. You know, they're doing Frozen, and they've got The Lion King is still going, which I hear is a pretty good show, you know. A lot of money, incredible amount of money. And back in the day, the Marx Brothers weren't known, but they had a Broadway show, and that's where they worked out their bits to perfection. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, what, a, what a great way. I wish I could go back in time. And well, Broadway was that. very different then, too. It wasn't yeah. just... Had a stare with his sister it, and all Yeah, that. but it wasn't just it was. Broadway shows. It was things like the Ziegfeld Follies and... Mm -hmm. uh, Minsky's burlesque, you know, and things like that, that, you know, and, uh, uh, there, you know, the, it, it, but, it, but all I'm saying is today it's, you know, it, it, you go to, you know, a Broadway show costs now? Mm -hmm. Decent seat. Between yeah. 150 and 200 uh, 175 bucks. And that's for and the same. Like at the same day, either, yeah. And that's for the same cramped seat you used to sit in twenty years ago, you know. I mean, the, if, you know, what I'm talking about Jeff. They're the worst seats ever to sit through a whole thing. I I was watching uh, what was it, uh, the Book of Mormon, which was a wonderful show. Uh, but I was watching, the, went to see the Book of Mormon, and during at the end of the third act, I was my my body was cramping from the seats. I, and I finally, I had to kind of stand up. It was like, it was horrible. I had to stand up and walk over to the aisle so that I wouldn't be just, I was in pain. And those seats yeah. are just horrid. Just horrid. You know. So, anyway. Uh, I used to ask all the old timers, i say, what used to be here? And they'd tell me. And uh, one guy was like, yeah, the Chelsea uh, Hotel, the Chelsea Cinema right next to it, they used to park 18-wheelers uh, behind it overnight because trucks could get in and out of there so easily. They, and there was so much space in Manhattan in the early 60s. Yeah. And, oh, I wanted to ask Kevin a truck driver story. I, I've never heard one of his truck driver stories. I wonder if he had one of them. One of his choice stories. Oh. <laughs> That's why I called, basically. Yeah. <laughs> get the truck driver story. Well, uh, you're you're on I the gr you're on the griddle you're on the griddle thing. now, Kevin. What are you talking about right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what kind of truck driver story? The best, the best one. The, uh... Oh, I, I, I could. I'd have to. I'd have to. Yeah. I'd have to think something up, or it'd have to come up with something. I don't know. 
I'm trying to think. I'll have to think. Did anything I bizarre? Ran into a, did anything, but well, of course, you've told us that women like flash you all the time. Oh yeah, right? when you drive yeah. in a truck. Yeah. And you've seen what women giving guys blowjobs in cars. Yeah, I've yeah. seen that. In other words, you have a view from a truck of the world that very few pe- per- people are privileged to. Right downtown, yeah. <laughs> I've seen guys in traffic, uh, butt naked, driving over to Santa Cruz. Why? I don't know. I guess because uh, they can. I guess, yeah. And then they look up at you and go, oh, shit. Hey, listen, you know, <laughs> let's be honest. If we really, if there wasn't propriety in this world, would we really care about putting our clothes on in the morning when we walk out on the street? Yeah, I mean. Yeah. I mean, I. I that's, I, that's I, what it looks like sometimes when, you know, you're in the truck. You go, oh, shit, this guy just wanted to go down to the drive through or something and get something to eat. And he didn't realize he was going to be sitting next to a truck. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Is that enough yeah. truck story for you there, Chris? It'll do. You, you yeah. want, what, what, you, what were you, it, it usually relates to something that somebody's talking about, and then I can pop yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, what, yeah. what, what were you looking forward to? What kind of truck story would you like? Oh, danger, excitement, espionage, I'm not sure. I ran into a truck. I drove across country in a small cars about eight times, and I, you always stop where you see the big trucks for pancakes or whatever because that's the good stuff, and... I never knew a lot of truck drivers, but one guy, any two cities I would name, he would just spit out the mileage on it, and I, he was right about everything. I, he was like, uh, any, any, I asked him, what's the worst city for him? And he said, Chicago. And I said, why? And he said, it's just, you can't get anywhere fast, and it's such a huge city, and he just tried to avoid Chicago, and he seemed like he really did go to all 48 states and all that, so. And, yeah, uh, I was mainly western states. I didn't go cross country. But I were, there, were there cities yeah. that you didn't want to go to? Not really. I did a lot of San Francisco and yeah, a little you know, a little bit of L.A., but mostly it was the San Francisco, Central Valley, Portland. Seems to me San Francisco would be a hard city to navigate. It was, yeah. Yeah, but because I always tried to get up there early in the morning. Physically, you've got the hills, which are I don't think you'd want to take a yeah, truck but up. Yeah, when you're in the business district, you, you don't go on the, all the hills, you know. Right. Yeah, so well, I'm, I was dealing with you know, downtown California Street, and the you can, 48 And you could probably take a truck along the Embarcadero. Yeah, but dude, we had we had some challenging deliveries to make with... You know what I never saw a lot of were trucks on the Golden Gate Bridge. You were allowed to go on the Golden Gate Bridge, weren't oh, you? Oh, yeah, it's real expensive to take a truck on the Golden Gate Bridge. Really? I mean, what's yeah. expensive? Uh, I can't remember what we used to pay, but they're probably paying, they're probably paying 30 bucks to cross the bridge now. Wow. They paid per axle. Per axle, right. I remember yeah. yeah. when I was a kid, there were signs there saying so much. Yeah, I, I don't know what they're paying now, but it, geez, it's expensive for a car to go across that damn bridge. Uh, what is it now? Do you know, Tom? No, I don't drive. Because <laughs> when I dro- the last time I drove, last time I left San Francisco or drove across, I think I seem to remember 10 or $11, and I'm sure it's up to around 15 now. Yeah, uh, I think. I think it's about I think it's about seven or eight now. I could I could go look yeah, up. But, my but you can go both track. ways. In I other words, going one way you don't pay the toll. Going the other you way pay you do. Coming south. Yeah. 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 Uh, and they've uh, got yeah. they've got all the bridges set so that you can't like go on each bridge and avoid the tolls. Yep. Uh, so they because they alternate them. So if you go no on matter the, what you do, you'll pay. The Bay yeah. Bridge, I think. You pay at the end. Uh, yeah, you pay in coming uh, west on the Bay Bridge. You pay uh, south on the Golden Gate. You pay yeah east on the Richmond. You pay no yeah. west on the San Mateo. They got it all figured out. Well, the the no, Richmond is on the uh, yeah the Richmond toll, toll Plaza, as I remember, was on the east. If I'm not mistaken, on the Richmond side. On the Richmond side. You know yeah, what I west. you know what I remember show you how old I am. And there aren't many people out there I guess listening from San Francisco. I remember when there wasn't a bridge there. And you had to take a ferry across. In Richmond? It, yep, the Richmond San Rafael ferry. I'm trying to remember, yeah. It took off from approximately where San Quentin is and wound up approximately where the 
Uh, I think maybe they still have some of the peerage there, if I'm not mistaken. When did they build it? the side of the bridge. Uh, uh, I think it was in the 50s, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Uh, uh, but when I was a kid, my parents, we used to go over and see some friends who lived in uh, Mar Moraga. And uh, we uh, would go across using the, the, because we lived in San Anselmo, we'd use the uh, ferry. Yeah. And one night, I remember on the ferry, the, the waters were so choppy <clears throat> that I thought we were going to die. <laughs> I mean, I, when I was a little kid, I was puking my guts out. Yeah, it gets rough over there. It got really rough. And they, they would run those ferries come hell or high water because obviously that was the only way to get your car from one end to the other. But I think it was only like 15 cents or something. You know? Yeah. Do you know that the Staten Island Ferry, I think, is still like a quarter or something like that? They never raised the price on it. There's a law that was an instituted. Am I right about that, Jeff? No. Is Staten Island? It's free, isn't it? it? Maybe it is free. It's free if you you know if you, if, like... if you don't have a car. It's free. Oh, okay. And it's still free. Okay, yeah. It's still. I remember free. paying on it the one time I went on it. Yeah, it's actually a great little ride. You know, you go past yeah, the, you go past the Statue of Liberty, and you know, uh, and uh, uh, so I mean, I, I I did the Staten Island ferry one day with a with a girlfriend. I uh, one time I did it at night in a car just to take uh, like at one o'clock in the morning. They ran I think twenty four seven if I'm not mistaken. Um, That's a place I, I can never remember driving over there at all. And then they built the Verrazano Bridge, and that changed the whole nature of it because you can now go from Staten Island to to, Bro to Brooklyn on a bridge, and that bridge is so long. That if you look at it from a distance, it's curved, because it's curved to, for the Earth. So that it, it you know, it, did you know that, Jeff? Or am I telling stuff yeah. you didn't know, you New Yorker? No, no. Did you? Uh, did, when that, Is that the one that's falling apart too? Verrazano? No, I don't think it's falling apart. The one that was falling really apart was the Tappan Zee, which was uh, oh, up, up the Hudson River, and they just they just have built a new br bridge for that so uh there's a new tap and z so did you ever hear about uh, before the brooklyn bridge the the brooklyn ferry was horse powered no and the horses the horses would go in a circle and that would create the really? paddle wheel or whatever and i maybe that's even where merry-go-rounds came around because I, I, they, i'm sorry they chris just... but i may look old but not that old uh, that, <laughs> yeah that goes way back yeah yeah so you know, what, days of baseball you know what I've all. often wanted to see in New York City is when they first built the subways, the first line was the one, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, uh, uh, oddly enough, it went from downtown all the way uptown uh, to about, I guess, maybe 110th, 125th, something like that, maybe more. You know, it only took them a year and a quarter to build it. You know how they built it? Because you could do that in, in those days. You couldn't do it today. Today, you build a subway; it takes forever, and you got to bore through concrete. They simply dug a ditch mm -hmm. all the way uptown because there was nothing in their way. They didn't have to get a right of way on anything. Just a ditch, and put down the rails, and then put grading over it. And you had your subway. Uh, and the first station was a very ornate, beautiful station down by City Hall. And it's not open anymore. It's not used any longer. The trains go past it. But if you want to, you can take a tour of it. And suppose I've never been there. I'm going to do that one day. It's supposedly absolutely magnificent. There's pictures online, I believe, yeah. Yeah, just magnificent. Yeah. But they started the first line they started, they only got about a half a mile and gave up. And then it was a couple of years later that they finally decided to try and complete the project. And that was the first subway. That was the uh, IRT, or no, it wasn't IRT, that's in a rapid, in a, in a borough mm -hmm. rapid transit. 
It was the, it has a name for it. There were several different companies that ran the subways originally, and finally they were all brought together. But, uh, uh, but you remember all that, right, Jeff? Some of it. Yeah. <laughs> you probably remember. I used to just get on the train, you know, in high school uh, in Brooklyn, and I lived in Queens, and uh, when it was fun, you'd say, well, I wonder which train I'm going to take home. Because uh, yeah. I could go through Manhattan and well, come here, around. Here was the lesson I learned when I first moved to New York. I moved here, uh, and uh, I met my... Uh, my, <clears throat> excuse me, my third wife, my third ex-wife, uh, and now I call Marjorie my fourth ex-wife, uh, uh, and I met her, and she said, it, so now it's really a, a snowy, horrible day. It's like, as they say in New York, snow up to your pupic, right? I mean, it's really high. It's mm -hmm. getting high. And she says, we got to go to my parents for a party at, in the Bronx. I think it was like a Passover Seder or something. And I said, we're going out in this? And she says, no, we're taking the subway. I said, in this? She, I'd never taken a subway. I'd been here a year or so, and I never took a subway. I, was, I took cabs, okay? So we get on the subway. And we get on the train, and we're there in 20 minutes. And we get out of the train, and we're a half a block from the house, so we wade through the snow a little bit, and we're there. And I went, that's the most wonderful form of transportation I've ever taken in my life. Mm -hmm. And she says, you haven't discovered the subways? You know, and to the, now, I use the subways almost exclusively. Why take a why take a cab? It takes forever to get downtown. Yeah, you know. But I get on a train. I'm there no time flat, and it doesn't matter whether it's snowing or not, or whether it's raining. You know, all that matters is if somebody had a heart attack at Forty Second Street, and then everything stops. <laughs> Plus, they're all air conditioned now, right? Oh yeah, yeah. In the early days, they had fans, right? And rattan seats. Oh, oh, it's they, hot and sweaty. I remember rattan seats. When I first came to New York, also, there was the graffiti on the trains. People were tagging the trains like crazy. But I loved it because when the train would go by, it was this blur of color. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then they would get rid of it, and it was a blur of gray. You know, and, and, and uh, I, I really loved the... Uh, I really love the uh, uh, the subways. I, I loved New York that at, in those <coughs> days. It's just, you know, I love the filth. I loved how rough it was. I love like somebody said, life is always interesting when you're living on the edge of a razor, you know. And that's what you were doing every day in New York. It's funny. Is there a movie that brings you back to a certain memory from uh, the beginning, like a someone captured Penn Station just right before it changed, or? Someone really well, captured New York. Well, I, uh, I, I was I living in New York when I came out. I think I was. I think a picture that best captures New York of the times was Midnight Cowboy. Okay. You know. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm walking here. Just absolutely sums it all up. You know, uh, and it was it was it was it was it was uh, it was something. It was really something. Um, there's a show out now uh, called The Deuce on HBO, which is about life basically on 42nd Street among hookers and porno filmmakers and that whole group of people who I, I got to know rather intimately when I was living here. And that reminds me very much, of very, very good about recreating New York from back then even down to the litter on the streets. It's like they, they have some people who dress the set with litter. <laughs> I mean, because they're walking down the streets and they have these papers, you know, newspapers. Do you remember how it was, Jeff? Sure. The filthy? Cigarette fu butts all over the place. Dog turds. Right. Yes. <laughs> That's something no kid today will ever have to see is a dried up dog turd that was turning white. You know, remember those? Yeah. <laughs> Kids today will never know that because people do clean up behind their behind their dogs. 
that's the law. Well, except for one guy here in our courtyard who let his bulldog take a dump and didn't clean it up. So, mm -hmm. and, and everybody went apoplectic about it. So, yeah. what remind what, what's romantic to you, Chris? What place engendered romance in your life? I'm not uh, talking about sex. I'm talking about uh, that you fell in love with. Like I fell in love with New York. This is a weird thing, but uh, you remember your first big city, and there was that weird movie Zodiac with Robert Downey Jr., and I yeah, thought they yeah. really captured San Francisco in the late 60s, early 70s with the, the yellow Chronicle vending machines everywhere and the yeah. litter and the dress and the way people, the way the v World War II guys dressed and the way the younger guys dressed, and right. it really brought me back to my first memories. And there's a TV show, I just saw my first episode, Dan August with uh, Burt Reynolds, and Man, that took me back to my first couple memories of style and what I what I woke up to, you know, basically. When yeah. the light first went on. Well, how old are you? Um, 51. 51. So I was in kindergarten in 71, you know. But I remember the moon landing. I remember Playland by the Sea, just barely. Oh, you know, Playland. Yeah. By the Sutro Baths. Did you ever know Playland, Tom? No, it's uh, by the time I got here. Uh, it was gone because they had this big laughing woman. You remember the we big used to go there all the time. Remember My dad had a gas station right down there at the end of the Great Highway. Remember mm -hmm. the big, big laughing woman? Yeah, yeah and man, all the doggy diners and all that stuff. I remember, you know. Yeah, yeah I got to tell you, I, I've told the story before. Dad on the gas station right on the corner down at the end, yeah. across I, from the. I've told the story there. before. You know, there's a the beach is right there, and you have this huge beach wall that goes for. Uh, seawall for about a mile yep. <clears throat> maybe more and I'm down there one day and I'm with some woman I'm on, we're on a date and I figure it's a, as romantic a place as I can find at the moment in the beach you know leaves, leaves wap, lapping in and out and I turn around and I look at the seawall and somebody from top to bottom on the seawall has written Nobody loves Alex Bennett. <laughs> now, th this was Got not the days the when you, it, that was not the days where you carried a camera everywhere you went. I wish I had a photograph yeah, of that because no nobody shit. believes me. But it said nobody loves Alex Bennett, <laughs> and I said to myself, "Well, I guess I must have had some impression on this fucking town." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, and, and, and the woman who was with me went, yeah, I can understand that. Uh, <laughs> you know? But uh, I, I remember that. Was it Phil? Story. or No, it wasn't Phil that did it, okay. no. And Phil yeah. wasn't to date either. So, uh, yeah. Yes, Jeff, quickly. So, you know, in the city, there was a subway station only for the president. Yes, under, yeah. under the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. And that was built yeah. for Franklin Roosevelt so that no one could see that he was crippled. And the train would go under the Roosevelt Hotel. I believe the tracks are still there. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't a subway. It was actually a train track that came off the main line going into, like, Grand Central. And then he would get out of the train, and they would take a, an elevator up to the, literally, the ballroom where he gave his speeches. And then they would wheel him in. And nobody knew, that was so nobody would know that he was he was uh, you know incapable of walking. They built it for him. Uh, yes, Not they literally that. built it oh, for him. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. It was uh, just a, he was only the president for what? Eight, uh, sixteen, 16 years. years. Yeah. Well, yeah. before he died, but he in four terms, four terms. Uh, four terms. Wow. Yeah, and and, and it, what a. You know, uh, it, uh, somebody should do a documentary on that on how they. Why don't they put how they, Trump on that train and fill it in? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we'll leave it at that. Okay. Hey, thank you so much, Jeff. It's been really a nice night tonight. I've really enjoyed this. Uh, Kevin, thank you. Uh, Tom Yamaguchi, thank you, and thank you, Chris. I thank all of you because I was feeling like shit today because of this whole thing with AT&T, and you made me feel much, much better because it turned out to be just a terrific show. Give yourself a, a, big, a big wave goodbye to everybody out there in our, uh, in our audience. Thanks for joining me. Hopefully, we hope we see you again tomorrow night. See you again soon, Chris, hopefully. All right? 
Hey, that's it. That's our citizens panel for tonight. Let me uh, let me dump them here. That's it. It, it, not a nice way of putting it, but that's what I'm saying. Uh, and and uh, next is uh, Jack Bishop. He's going to be doing the intersection. That will be followed in kind w with uh, connections. That's at 1 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Daylight Time. Tomorrow night, uh, no Damien. So that means we go on at 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life, and in the meantime... As always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. <laughs>